Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel and in this video I am going to explain you how you can authenticate your Azure OpenAI based app using Microsoft Entra ID. So till now we have created various samples and in every single sample I was using uh, key based authentication. But there are some reasons, there are some drawbacks of this key based authentication and due to those drawbacks we cannot use this particular feature in our production based app. So now what are those reasons I have already explained in my previous video. So this is the video I would recommend you to go and check it out. It's just a five minutes of five minutes video. I've explained three to four key reasons why we should not go for key based authentication. And I have provided a very high level idea of a few alternatives which you can go for. So in this video I'm going to talk about one of those alternatives. So let's go ahead and have a quick look at these five lines of code. So I've made this code very simple. I'm not doing anything fancy here because idea is to show you how you can replace your API key with Microsoft Entra IT implementation. So let's have a quick walkthrough. So before that, I'm going to open up a new terminal. I will get into my environment because I have already installed all the required packages. So what I'm doing here is I'm just grabbing Azure OpenAI from the OpenAI and then I'm constructing a client object which takes three key parameters. The first one is API key, then API version and the Azure endpoint. So API key and the Azure endpoint, I have grabbed it from the Azure portal itself. So you can go to Azure portal, go to Azure OpenAI instance, and you can click on endpoints. So you can see that these are the So this is the key I have used and this is the endpoint which I have mentioned over here. So once you have this client object ready, you are good to go and make a call to the completion endpoint. So this completion endpoint uses a create function which takes key, few parameters like model. So this is the model which I have already deployed. And feel free to change this model based on whatever you are deploying. Then next is the prompt. So prompt is the user's query which user wants to ask and the max token. So I'm just restricting it to 80. So definitely you can change all these three parameters based on your requirement. And after making a call to this create function, we will get a response which is nothing but the output which we are looking forward for. So let's quickly try this out. I'm going to run this Python app. And you can see that in the terminal you got a response, there is a joke and the output. So till now we have not done anything fancy here. So let's go ahead and see how we can get rid of this key. So the very first change which we need to do here in this code is just two lines of code we are going to write. So let's go ahead and install the package Azure Identity if you are following me. In my case, I have already done it, so I need not to install it again. So from Azure Identity, I'm going to import two things. The first one is to grab the credentials. So I would say default Azure credential. And next thing is for my token providers. So for that, I'm saying get better token provider. So these are the two things which you need to import and then I am going to create an object which is going to hold my credentials. So I would say cred equal to default Azure credential. I will tell you in a while how this works but let's go ahead and just type in few lines of code. So here is the typo. Okay. Next thing is I need to construct an object for my token provider. So I would say token provider equal to get bearer token provider. And it is going to take uh, two parameters. The first one is cred and the second one is the scope. So for that I would say you can get it from the documentation like what scope I'm typing over here. Let me grab it. Uh, 
I'm going to paste it over here. So this is a scope. So now we have cred, we have token provider. Next thing is we will just go ahead and replace this API key from here. And instead of this, we will say Azure AD token provider. And let's assign this to this token provider. And we are almost done. Let me save this code and Okay, so let me execute this one first. What is happening here right now? So if I'm going to execute this application, it will tell you that some errors are there with respect to the authentication. So let's have a quick look at this tag. And here it is saying that there is an authentication error and it is saying permission denied. Principal does not have access to API or the operation. So what's happening here is the very first thing, let's understand this default Azure credential part. So I can quickly point you to the documentation. So this is a class and how it works is it goes through all these various types of credentials. So it will start from the very first one, which is environmental credentials. So let's say you have already set the environment variable with the required credentials then it will, this function will automatically go and pick up the credentials from there. If it is not there, it will go ahead and check for load identity credential. If it is not there, it will go ahead and check for managed identity. So this is how it will go from top to down, top to bottom. And here, if you are using Visual Studio, then you can even log into Visual Studio and it will pick those credentials from your Visual Studio login. Otherwise, interactive browser credential or if you are using CLI then that is also an option to pass in the default credentials. So in my case I will go ahead and let the pop-up appear which is going to ask me the credentials. So what I'm going to do here is I would say connect AG account. So if you have not installed this module in PowerShell make sure that you are doing it. So you can see on the top it is showing me this. I'm going to Select my username and now you can see that it was able to fetch the current uh, subscription detail. It means my login was successful. Now if I will run this again, you will see that same error is coming. Okay, so there is no change. Still we have the same error. So what it is saying is although or there is a high possibility that you may have created your own uh, Azure OpenAI instance, but it doesn't mean that you can access that from anywhere because what security guidelines says is uh, you should have a constrained environment or you should have a proper permissions in place which will let uh, your app be accessed from some legal or some ethical uh, uh, developers or the users only. So in that case, what we need to do is we will go to Azure portal and we will assign some required permissions. So let's go back to this and I'm going to Microsoft Entra. On the left hand side, you can, so there are multiple ways you can do it. You can either assign the user directly or you can go with the group. I will go ahead with the user first. So the user which I'm using is already part of Entra and I can quickly show you here. So click on users and search for the name Shweta. So this is the ID which I'm using over here. So it means the user is already there. So definitely you can go and cross check it before granting the permission. In my case, it is already there. So I'm not doing it. But if you feel that user is not there, then feel free to add it using this new user button. Okay. Now, so the user is already there. We need to grant the permission. So for granting the permission, we need to go to our Azure OpenAI instance, uh, go to access control, and here you can see add button on the top. So click on this add role assignment. And here we need to select the proper role which uh, we need to assign to user. So I'm going to search for OpenAI. And here you can see there are like few roles listed. So you can choose the one which works very well for you. I'm going with this OpenAI user role because it provides all the required things which I want to do. So select this one, click on members, 
and here now there are two options either you can go with user group or service principle or you can go with managed identity but like I said I am going with the user this time so I'm going to select the first radio button click on select member select members and here I can type in my name and you can see this name is appearing over here I selected this and click on select you can see that it got added over here review plus assign and just click this review plus assign button now we have assigned the role the next thing is sometimes it takes time to propagate the permissions so if you're trying out immediately it may not work so just give it few seconds or a minute or two before retrying your application well so it worked and this is what our output is so why did the tomato turn red because it saw the salad dressing and hope you understood how easy it is to replace your keys by using just these three lines now one another way which i can show you is how to do this for the group because right now i'm a single user but when you're working on an application there is a very high possibility that multiple team members are working on the same application so in that case what you can do is you can go to uh, entra microsoft entra and click on new group so I'm going to create a new group. So let's say, let's give it some name, provide some description and click on create. Now the group is created. Let me refresh it. Okay, sample group is there. Click on the group and here you can assign the members to this group. So. Total members you can see right now is zero. Okay, so I can click on add members and I can select members whom I want to add. So this is the one which I want to add. Click on this, click on select and you can see that this member got added to this particular group which we just created. So let's say you have 10 to 12 team members working on the same project. In that case, you can just list all those, add all those members over here and grant permission only on this group. So you need not to add remove permission as in when your team members are joining. So once you have this thing added over here, you can go back to your Azure OpenAI instance, go to access control, click on role assignment, and here you can again so repeat the same activity which we have done go to members and here you can search for the group so i would search for the group so this is the group which we have created just click on this click on select and you can see that it got added over here so this is another way of doing the same thing even you can do the same thing with the service principle as well so I hope you got an idea of what we are trying to achieve here. Do let me know in comments if this works for you. Thanks for watching.